Dan Larson here at the photo booth with a bunch of stuff in the P.O. box. We got a lot to cover, uh, but first a little bonus to kick things off. Recently we were able to work with Dr. Pepper on an ad campaign for Spider-Man Far From Home themed limited time only cans available at Walmart. Uh, check out our recent History of Robotech video uh, to see the 30 second version of that ad if you haven't already. Uh, I want to take a second to show you a little bit about the uh, a little bit of the behind the scenes movie magic involved. In order to shoot the ad in a timely manner to have it hit when product was actually arriving on shelves, Dr. Pepper sent us some prop cans uh, to use in the video and, uh, because the real cans weren't manufactured and shipped yet. Uh, we were given instructions to be very careful with them because we weren't going to be able to we weren't going to be able to get any kind of replacements uh, if something were to happen to them. Uh, they're not made the same as the regular cans, uh, but they are still sealed. There's like a vent hole in the bottom here. Something with the manufacturing process to get these made, I'm sure, uh, that allows them to not, I don't know, like explode or anything, even though there's nothing in them. Uh, but they seem to be like wrapped, you know, with a sort of graphic as opposed to the regular cans that would be printed. Uh, anyway, it was a challenge to act like they were the weight of full soda cans, but that's why they hired us. They wanted the best. On to the mail. Up first is August from Magnolia, Texas. He is at Plastic Profit Photos on Instagram. Uh, he sent us a whole whole bunch of stuff in here. We've got uh, a Super Friends Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Uh, but the kicker here is that uh, we've actually got uh, August added a uh, custom bomber jacket that he uh, purchased off uh, eBay. Um, and uh, he, in, in his note, he wanted to address the fact that uh, be careful. Uh, there are all kinds of cool things on eBay that you can buy to custom up your uh, six inch action figures, but that, that is a uh, that's a rabbit hole that you will very easily fall down uh, This jacket looks great. And I'm actually I may I may just pull it off a hal here and throw it on my Cyclops depending uh, going for that 90s look uh, we also have inside here. This is called uh, I've never heard of these before uh, What is this called again Jojo from Beast Box? Um, and I already took him out of here and, and transformed him. And I'm going to apologize in advance that I don't... I, <laughs> I've only transformed him a couple of times. Uh, so I don't remember exactly how to get him back into uh, cube mode. Uh, but that's what his alt mode is. Uh, it's just cube. And I, I don't know anything... I don't know anything about this line. I've never heard of it. I don't know if there... I assume there's other uh, critters and stuff. I think I just saw something recently online where there was like a parrot. Uh, just like a bird kind of transformer. You know what a parrot is. I'm not going to tell you what a parrot is. Um, other stuff in here. We've also got, that goes with Beast Box, Jojo. Uh, we've also got a vintage uh, Boba Fett Lego minifigure. Uh, other minifigures also. These are some uh, translucent Lego minifigures. We've got, uh, we've got Hulk, whose hair I just took off. Translucent Hulk. Snap that on. There we go. And also... Uh, just a generic red one. We've got a uh, Stormtrooper, a generic clear, and a generic blue here. Uh, these are neat, and of course they're all totally unlicensed. Uh, the kind of stuff that can be purchased online that uh, is just absolutely skirting around ownership and licensing rights for LEGO. Uh, in here we have vintage Kenner Boba Fett uh, for the Boba Set number 458. He's in great shape. He's in great shape for me. This is not nearly any kind of mint sort of action figure, uh, but it's, uh, you know, scratched up, all that. Joints are actually in good shape, uh, but those are the kinds of things I love. Uh, 458 gets us that much closer to 500. Uh, and then, of course, uh, August is a big fan of Hellboy, so he wanted to make sure that uh, Hellboy was getting some representation uh, in this booth video, so he sent in the uh, Super 7 Reaction. Are we still calling him Reaction? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Super 7 Reaction Hellboy figure here, which is cool. I haven't had a chance to look at any of the Hellboy ones yet, even though I do own uh, quite a few Reaction figures at this point. Um, and that's all that's in that box. Thank you very much, August, for sending that stuff in. Next up is Bill from Cube Dudes. He is at Cube Dudes on Instagram. Uh, Bill, uh, hang on a second, let me grab this card out of here. The card's actually pretty cool, too. Uh, Bill makes, uh, he makes these paper craft sculptures, art pieces, action figures. I'm not sure. Action figure might be going a little far because there's no real action to them. Um, but they are these incredible paper craft uh, sculptures. And look at that. It is a one of one cube dude and it's signed by Bill himself. Um, he, got a, he got a little, his blaster here got a little bent up in the box in shipping, but uh, this was the card that he sent as well. I don't know if you can see, but these are all like, this is individual, you know, individually cut here in paper craft. Um, but uh, this is a, an absolutely incredible thing. Um, the Check out his Instagram, at uh, Cube Dudes on Instagram. It's just this, Cube Dudes, no space. 
Uh, check him out on Instagram because the other pieces that he has on there, especially the cars, are absolutely ridiculous. Ecto-1 kit, the A-Team van, amazing stuff. He's a heck of a craftsman. Look at the detail on this thing. Can you see he's even got the little, he's even got his little, everything's here. All the little emblems and stuff. This is incredible. I don't even know how you cut something that small. It's ridiculous. Anyway, he also collects Mechanic, vintage Mechanic action figures in the Mecha set. Uh, good to know that those figures can and will find a home someday with Bill. Bill, thank you very much for sending that in. This is incredible. Now we have Roberto from Portland, Oregon. Uh, Roberto uh, was far too kind here. He sent in, and yeah, you know, it's not just Roberto. A lot of you, uh, anybody who's been featured in any of these videos, uh, thank you to all of you for sending stuff in. Uh, you've absolutely helped me build and maintain collections that uh, I never thought, realized I was ever going to get into. Uh, this is actually a really great example of that. These Shoto Kamen Rider uh, blind box figures. Actually, I guess they're not blind box because you do know exactly what you're getting inside. Uh, but uh, this was a weird collection. I apologize for not knowing the names of the people who had, uh, off the top of my head here, who have actually sent in figures uh, like these before. Uh, but I do have uh, three. I think I have three currently. Uh, and then now this is going to expand. Five? I can't even. I can't even remember how many I have currently. Um, but uh, <clears throat> this is one, two. These are all assembled too here. And again, my common writer knowledge is somewhat limited. So uh, I know that this is either one or two. Uh, and then there's another version of one or two here. So like these guys are pretty similar, except the one dude's. This guy's got the red lenses and the silver stripe down his sleeve. He's got a red belt instead of the silver belt. Um, they've got different uh, colored bug wings on the back. Uh, so we've got the figures, and then we also have a bike, which uh, I, I, I'm, I'm stammering here because I don't even know how to say. Like, wh how come, where's this kind of stuff in the U.S.? I know where it is. I, I know where it is. There are very particular licensing rights, and, you know, there's certain products that sell overseas that don't sell in the U.S., and I don't know that if this was a Marvel-themed line... You know, uh, I, I don't know if this kind of thing sells in the U.S., but uh, it's these things sell in Japan, and there's all different kinds of collectors and all different scales and uh, levels of people who are willing, willing to spend different kinds of money that, you know, you can move a lot more product. And I, and I don't even want to get into the economics of why pricing might be cheaper anywhere, but it, it's very likely cheaper over there, too. Uh, but uh, this bike uh, was is one of the pieces in here, because obviously all the common Rider guys have bikes, and um, I don't know how many of the bikes they did, but it's, uh, it's really, the handlebars are in here for this. It's really cool not only to have more of these figures to add to my collection, but also to have one of the motorcycles. That's really fantastic. Um, we also have <laughs> Roberto uh, also started. He was going to dip his toe into uh, DC's Primal Age, uh, but then he bailed. Uh, and the only figure he'd really picked up was this uh, translucent uh, Mr. Freeze, uh, here, and, uh, when he got out of the line, when he decided he wasn't actually gonna go collect the whole line, he said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send that off to Dan, let that live in a collection. I know that translucent figures will be appreciated. Wow, that is a tight grip. Well, I'm not even gonna put that in his hand right now, but this is a pretty cool figure, and, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this looks so little like Mr. Freeze. I'm not even sure I'm gonna call it Mr. Freeze. It's just a cool, what is this? Uh, I don't know what this is. It's an emblem. I don't know. Oh, is this? Oh, this must have come with the Primal Age stuff. Well, that shows how much I know about that toy line. Uh, inside, we also have. Well, this is the uh, card for it. The blister card. Um, but uh, uh, Roberto also uh, thought that he might get into uh, Toy Pizza's Knights of the Slice uh, collection, and he did pick up this figure. Uh, but just like with Primal Age, he decided that it was going to be a bit overwhelming, uh, something branching out in his collection that he wasn't necessarily, uh, he realized he might not be prepared to, to, to get into. Uh, but uh, he did purchase this one and pass on, which is awesome because I definitely don't have this colorway of this suit, and I'm always happy to give a shout out to Jesse and Nick at Toy Pizza for their work uh, making this action figure line, their dream a reality, and for all the cool videos that they make on their YouTube channel. Uh, so that's really awesome. Thank you very much to Roberto for sending all this stuff in. Colin from Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. He is at Fair Play Things on Instagram. Uh, most importantly, the most important thing in this box is this uh, plush Spider Ham. Uh, I did see Spider Verse, Into the Spider Verse. Absolutely loved it. Uh, I don't have it on DVD yet. I do. That's. I don't buy a lot of DVDs. Uh, that's kind of producer Greg's thing. Not necessarily with uh, superhero movies, but movies in general. Um, and uh, I. I don't really buy. I. I'm content with Netflix and the streaming services and stuff. And it's just. Uh, you know, if, if I get bit in the butt at some point and they take all those streaming services away and suddenly I don't own any of the movies, like, you know, Netflix uh, isn't going to have all the Marvel stuff anymore, which means I'm going to have to go buy all the Marvel movies on DVD. 
because uh, I'm probably not going to sign up for uh, Disney Plus or whatever their streaming service is. Anyway, uh, this is a great ham. I am still relishing in the fact that we are living in the golden age of spider ham right now. I saw a t-shirt the other day that I'm going to have to pick up as well. Because whoever, whoever thought that there was going to be this uh, mass market appreciation for the ham... Uh, all kinds of stuff in this box. Uh, we've got, uh, this is a blister card for uh, what is called a Fast Wheels Le Rue Rapide. I don't know how that's pronounced. I uh, hope I did a good job with that. Transformable racer, convertible voiture de course. Uh, I think it's this guy here who is not great. It's uh, it's not the best thing in the world, except that it is charmingly amazing. I want to see if I can transform this without breaking it. It is very lightweight. He basically just stands up and uh, shows you his guns here. So it is uh, hollow, you know, sort of plastic here. Uh, but the real reason that he sent it in, of course, was uh, the Toy Galaxy branding here. <laughs> I hope that should Toy Galaxy, the show, uh, we here, producer Greg and I, if we ever get into making toys, we can put together some. I guarantee this could blister card, uh, producer Greg will put together a, a better looking blister card than that. That looks like it came out of like a gas station or something. Um, so we got a uh, Transformer here. I don't know who this is. This was from an era where I was bailed out on Transformers. Um, and then we've got a lot of these uh, smaller, inexpensive, uh, transforming robot guys that I don't know much about. But I think this guy... No, that doesn't work. So, yeah. He, uh, he had definitely said uh, in his note, Colin did, uh, uh, that uh, some of these were... Oh, we've got IG-88 here. We've got a uh, bot... Nope, I thought that was a bot shot, but it is not. It is a tiny little... I'm not even sure what this is. Is this Master Splinter? We've got... Yeah, okay. It's a Ninja Turtles. It's always oh, a Kinder Egg. All right. There's some things about the toy industry that I am not aware of. Uh, more Transformers. This uh, this is definitely a Transformer that I currently have, but I love this one. I love this uh, particular... There was a, a wave of these. I don't remember what the exact name was called, if they had a specific name. Uh, what I liked about them was that it was hearkening back to the early days of you know G1, where you actually had one-scale Transformers that turned into objects that were the exact size that they were supposed to be uh, that could be used. I mean, this, for whatever it is, this tiny little pair of baby binoculars <laughs> transforms uh, into a robot. Oh, I just took his leg off. Uh, but it was cool. There's, uh, I think there was a camera, a cell phone, a couple of other pieces. Yeah, he's got his hands in here. Uh, but I, I, I appreciate that they actually made some, you know, life-size, quote-unquote, uh, objects that turned into stuff. Uh, again, I think these came out right around uh, maybe the first or second movie. I don't remember exactly. I'm such a I'm such a part-time Transformers collector. I'm always on the sort of fringe, like right on the edge. Uh, not not into it enough to to really be up on the mythology and all the names and the IDW characters and which versions of what. I just when I see the robots that look cool that I like, uh, I pick them up, and that's really is about as intense as my Transformer collecting gets. Uh, this guy I definitely had as a kid. I don't remember what the story with this thing was. But uh, just one of those little cheap knockoff feeling things that made the round rounds. It's by Tomy uh, out of Japan. Just a little, like, UFO guy. A lot of these things got picked up, rebranded, and released in, in the U.S. and across the world you know, as Transformers were blowing up and taking over everything. But, uh, lot, oh, what is this? Oh, fairplaythings.com. Check that out. That's uh, Colin's... Uh, site there. Uh, Colin, thank you very much for sending all this stuff in, especially the ham. Alberto from Orlando. Uh, he said in his letter that he's in the transition phase between collection 2.0 and 3.0, paring down some of the non-essential stuff in his collection. Uh, most of us have already been there and know what that's like and how hard that can be. Uh, others, you are on your way there at some point, most likely. <laughs> so have... Have some sympathy for those of us who are either in it or who have been through it. It is a tough call to make when you're deciding what to get rid of and what to keep. Uh, and knowing that it's the right thing to do for your collection. Uh, this is NECA's Big Red Predator, which, I'm going to be honest, uh, this is another collection like Transformers that I just sort of follow on the edges. Uh, I don't know anything about the mythology. I don't even know if this stuff has mythology anymore. I know some of the, the figures that NECA chooses pull from the comics, pull from games, pull from movies, whatever, and they've done all those. But then I know that there are also some that they just throw out because they're fun and interesting, and people dig this collection and this line, and they just have all these variations. These joints are a little loose. Uh, but i got to be honest, I didn't realize this was an actual release from NECA when... Uh, when I opened this box here from Alberto, 
Uh, I thought this was a custom figure <laughs> that he had made, uh, and no offense to Orlando, but the paint application on this, like, I thought the paint was so poorly done that it looked like what it looks like when I try to paint something. You know, I, I don't know the proper processes, and I haven't taken the time to learn as far as, like, you know, priming the surfaces or prepping the surfaces to make sure that the right kinds of paints are received. I just saw this thing, and I was like, man, what? This this doesn't look like it was a professionally released figure. And I looked it up, and I was like, again, yeah, no offense to Orlando. You might actually be a great customizer. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, when I looked this up and found out that it was an actual release from NECA, I was, I was stunned. And, you know, part of that, too, is these swords just seem way too tiny, uh, and I don't even know how he holds them. I know there's another set of hands in here somewhere. Uh, that, uh... Yeah, there's another set of hands in here, but I don't even know if this one hand can hold that sword. It's just so tiny. Like, I thought these swords came from, I don't know, like a Mortal Kombat figure or, or something else, a Toy Biz figure. I was like, oh, that's cute. You know, at least he found a set of... But no, this is it. This is an original, actual NECA release figure. So, it's cool. But, I don't know, not your best work, NECA. Uh, I'll add that to my collection of Predators. Uh, I think I've only ever bought myself one Predator, the uh, glow-in-the-dark one. And uh, you guys have <laughs> hooked me up with, like, six or seven others, which is great. Oh, that's not true. There was, uh, NECA had a table, a booth, where they were doing, like, eight or ten dollar action figures at uh, New Jersey Collectors Con one year. And I think I bought two or three there. But those were the really early ones that, uh, basically, you open the package. You look at the package and their knees and elbows snap. Uh, so I do like these. I will admit I do like these later figures because they are a lot more durable. And that was one of my biggest beefs uh, with the line in the first place. Uh, also in here, Alberto uh, included Translucent, uh, DC Direct, Hal Jordan Green Lantern, which uh, is a really, really cool figure. I God, the DC Direct ones, though, just give me something in the waist, something in the torso. Like, they're just so stiff and rigid. What's the point of having calf swivels if I don't even have a waist swivel? But, oh my God, I want to eat this action figure. And then we have... Uh, Green Lantern uh, Sinestro here as well. Let me put their two lanterns uh, in the bag. Alberto, thank you very much for sending all that stuff in. And up next is Ricky from Miami, Florida. He is at Shogun Warrior 76 on Instagram. Uh, Ricky sent in a couple of things here. We've got the uh, backup box. We've got the uh, Force Awakens Finn and Rey uh, Disney Infinity set. Which, uh, which is cool, because I didn't have these guys. I actually do have quite a uh, collection. It's really just the Star Wars ones. I have a couple of Marvel ones, from specifically from Disney Infinity. If you've watched this show for any amount of time, uh, or follow me on Instagram, I am at Toy Galaxy. You know that I love the uh, Disney Toy Box line that's currently out. It has been for a couple of years now, and that's that's a line of like four, five, six inch maybe action figures uh, that are based on this style of rendering, uh, which I absolutely love. They just push as many characters through this lens as you want uh, because I absolutely love it. It's adorable. I wish there was an actual uh, animated series or something that uh, had this styling to it. Uh, but for now, I'll just be content with the action figures uh, and even just these non-action statues. Uh, we've got the uh, Death Star, which I don't think came with the two of them because that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, I think this Force... Uh, First Order, Stormtrooper Helmet and Emblem. I believe that was what was in that three-pack together. This, I think, came with uh, Luke and Leia, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure. Or, or maybe another two-pack, but definitely from a original trilogy set. So we've got those. And then we've also got the <clears throat> Into the Spider-Verse uh, collectible minis set here, which uh, is cool for two reasons. One, uh, the ham. And I've almost got all the Spider-Ham stuff that came out, and I didn't even intentionally get it. I picked up a few things on my own, but between the Funko Pop, uh, the plush, a couple other figures and stuff, uh, I've actually put, a, put together a nice little collection of that stuff. And then also in here, I don't know if you can see it, uh, is the invisible uh, Miles Morales little figure. And uh, if nothing else, I really like these little jars that they come in. Um, I'll have to see if you can turn them around and put other stuff in there. Not that those cool the f those figures aren't cool in there, uh, but I think I have other stuff that might be a little bit cooler. Uh, and then also in here we have a couple of uh, Gundam Converge figures. We have the uh, regular RX-78 II, my favorite, which I actually did already put together. That little guy, I think that's everything. Oh, he's got his stand here. There it is. Ah, these things are so adorable. <laughs> I love this stuff so much. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that, like, you know, all, all these little things you have in Japan. Like, this is really well done. This is really well sculpted. There's a lot of detail on this thing. 
for something that, you know, in the U.S., you would think that this is just like, oh, it's a quarter machine, you know, throw away nothing. And this is from Gundam Origin, which you know because he's got his giant gun on him, uh, which he doesn't have later on in any of the series. Is, uh, but just the amount of detail that's on this thing, like, you can, I don't know if you can see, he's even got, like, metallic-y kind of paint. Uh, or actually, those might even be translucent lenses on his eyes there. Um, and so we've got uh, New Gundam and we've got uh, Char's uh, Zack. Um, these things are great, and you guys have been super nice, and you've sent in... Uh, again, this is another collection that I've never seen one of these in person to purchase myself, uh, but uh, a lot of you have actually sent these pieces in, so I have a nice little collection of these things now. Uh, and RX-72 is always my favorite, and whatever collection comes up, I'm always going to want him, so thanks for pushing me in the right direction there. Uh, once again, Ricky. This next batch of stuff is from RJB, uh, who's out of Kirksville, Missouri. Uh, and I want to use this as an example to sort of send a message. Send a message. I'm sending a message to all of you. Um, if uh, if you send something in, uh, I please, I love it when people give uh, uh, include like notes and stuff. If, if for no other reason than it's neat to see how many people are actually still writing letters uh, unprompted, either handwritten or, you know, typed up and then printed out. Uh, a, it gives me a little, you know, story behind whatever the thing is that you're sending in. B, um, you know. It reminds me uh, if we had a conversation or something about it, and I hate to sound like a jerk, like, ah, I'm so big now, everybody's trying to talk to me and stuff, uh, but I do get a lot of messages on social media, across social media, and I try very hard to keep it all straight to make sure that uh, I'm taking the time to remember where everybody's uh, talking to me at, mentioning what they're going to send in or whatever, uh, but sometimes I do get mixed up and I can't keep track. So um, if, if we've had a conversation somewhere and then you send something in and I act like I don't remember what it was, it's possible that uh, I've just it's it's got lost in the shuffle of my brains uh, and all the messages that I have received. It's not that I don't appreciate it. So RJB from Kirksville, Missouri sent in the uh, mint in package DC Multiverse Bizarro, which is bizarre for no other reason than, uh, of course, the way he's packaged. And I give Mattel some some crap uh, for uh, some of the products that they roll out, the quality and whatever, uh, just in my personal opinion. Duh. But the packaging on this is really ingenious, and I applaud them uh, for, for having the <laughs> confidence to put this guy in the package backwards like this. Hang on, it's, this box is so big that, uh, so uh, just physically large that I, I can't fit it in the booth here. <laughs> so uh, also in the box, we had some comics here, uh, classic Justice League uh, cover here, uh, some Frank Miller uh, Daredevil stuff here, which is uh, really amazing stuff. We've got uh, Doctor Strange, and I specifically wanted to draw attention to a couple of these here. Uh, this is not the Doctor Strange we got in the movie, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, t uh, shirt off, kicking butt. Over here we've got, uh, look at this beard. Look at this beard he's rocking. That's, that's a, that is a confident, tough, strange. Uh, and then we've also got a handbook, uh, official handbook of the Marvel Universe Deluxe Edition, issue three with Doctor Doom and Daredevil on the cover. Uh, and then lastly, this ridiculous thing. Uh, not sure why why uh, this got sent in here. Not really. Uh, we don't really do board games and stuff. I assume it was for the sheer absurdity of the thing. This is called Airport, the board game, a challenging family game where each player runs his own business, buying, selling, trading, and delivering freight contracts via aircraft. Look how excited everybody is here to be playing this game. Uh, now, this is the kind of thing where it's like, yeah, it's neat, it's goofy, it's silly. Like, oh, who would want to play that? Um, and it would be a bit more charming if this was actually from like 1950 or 1960 or even maybe even like the 1980s. Uh, but this game is uh, copyright 1999, so it almost feels like, uh, you know, it almost feels like it was trying to be that, trying to be ironically silly. And that takes away some of the ironic silliness of it. Now, that said, I mean, kudos on the use of this photo here, which is straight out of the 80s. Uh, and I haven't played yet, uh, so it may, uh, it may actually be a good game, and I may be giving it too much crap, but that's my assumption as to why, uh, RGB sent that in, but, uh, thanks for sending all that stuff in, and I'm definitely gonna, we're gonna give this a shot, we're gonna, I'm gonna try it, I don't know that we're gonna shoot it or anything, probably not, in fact, I guarantee we're not, uh, but I'm gonna play it and see if it's good, and who knows, maybe it's the best game ever and I was missing out. Now, I'm going to do my best to show this thing off, but uh, I don't know how well this is going to work. Uh, Robert Wilson the fourth. He is at Robert Wilson IV. That's four uh, on Instagram. Hang on. I should I should have done a better job preparing this before I started shooting here. Uh, Robert does a lot of comics illustration and posters and all kinds of stuff. He's really uh, an incredible artist. Um, this uh, this particular print 
is of my favorite RX-78 II classic Grandpa Gundam in the hangar bay with uh, all kinds of uh, uh, mechanics and technicians and stuff and potentially Amaro here, but uh, that may just be somebody sitting in for him um, while he's off uh, whining or being sad or depressed or whatever. Uh, it is a gorgeous print. It is huge. Uh, it's got a little bit of a sort of metallic-y kind of sheen in spots to it. Uh, I cannot urge you enough to go check out his work. Uh, he's got a lot of similar interests to you and I. Uh, if you don't like Gundam, I'm sure there's going to be something on there that you will like. Uh, so check him out. Like I said, Robert Wilson, the fourth IV. Uh, Robert Wilson IV on Instagram. Um, and just uh, give him a follow and go, go like about a thousand of his pictures if he's got that many. Uh, anyway, thank you again to Dr. Pepper, August, Bill, Roberto, Colin, Alberto, Ricky, RJB, and Robert. Thank you for watching this and all of our videos. Hit like, hit subscribe. Check out our Patreon if you're in the position to help the channel grow. Thank you. Later. <laughs>